Watch me have some fun with old Mike. Yeah? Anytime you think you're gonna put anything over on that old timer, you got another guest coming. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the boss told me to give Mike a hand with that valve job. And you see, since my boy has been studying about engines in school, well, I've been brushing up on fundamentals and design features so I could help him. And I've learned some things I never knew before. So I figure maybe I can slip some questions to Mike that'll stop him cold. I don't know, Joe. That Irishman's had his head under a car hood for years. You better watch your step. Oh, don't worry about me. Come on, let's go over and get started. So the boss says, Joe, go over and help Mike on that valve job. Sure, it's is a joke you're making. Tell me now, the poor man isn't losing his sanity, is he? No, but the boss will blow his top if you two don't get to work. Come on now, Mike. How about bringing Joe up to date? How come you decided this car needed a valve job? It was very simple, my boy, trouble getting the engine started. And he'd get a miss on a low-speed pickup. Yeah? Well, how about faulty ignition? Or poor carburation? Now, they'd give him the same trouble, wouldn't they? True, true, very true. But not in this case. Because when I made a vacuum test, the needle was dropping back sharply about five inches. So... I knew the engine was losing pressure, either past the rings or the valves. Then I made a compression test and found a couple of weak cylinders. When little oil on the rings didn't bring the compression up, I knew it was valves causing the trouble. And here's the proof. You see this exhaust valve? It's pitted along the face. And would you take a look at this one? All burned on one side it is. No wonder the poor engine wasn't doing its best. Well, tell me, Mike. Why do you have to grind valves? Glory be, can you look at these valves and then ask such a question? Shame on you. No, I'm serious, Mike. I know you've got to grind them to clean up the face and true up the head, but what gets them in that condition? Well, Joe, what with the heat in the combustion chamber and the deposits forming from the burned gas, tis a wonder the valves don't need grinding more often. I see what you're getting at, Joe. You mean that you have to grind valves because something happens to them that keeps them from making a gas-tight seal. Is that it? That's it, Tech. I want Mike to tell me what that something is that keeps the valve from making a good seal in operation. Didn't I just tell you they get pitted and burned from the heat and carbon? Now, if they don't seat right... Ah, that's it, Mike. Proper seating. That's the most important thing in the life of a valve. And it's a pretty safe bet whenever you run into a condition where you have to grind valves that poor tappet adjustment was one of the underlying causes. Right you are, Joe. Suppose you give us your explanation of why tappet adjustment is so important. Well, gosh, I sort of hate to. Uh, maybe Mike has some ideas on the subject. Well, go right ahead, Joe. Get it off your chest. Well, first of all, we have to have tappet clearance to take care of expansion when the valve stem is hot, right? Nobody will argue with you on that. The specifications for each engine tell us how much tappet clearance that engine should have. But that's where a good mechanic watches his step. He sets those clearances with the engine cold and remembers to check them again when the engine is hot. You're right, and that's important. Aha, you're a man after my own heart, Tech, my boy. I got no faith in cold clearances alone. Hot and running is the only way to check tappets, to make sure you're right. You know, some fellas make a mistake in setting tappets too close because they think it'll make an engine quieter. But it won't. It's the shape of the cam that keeps valve action quiet. You see, there's a quieting ramp on each side of the cam. You better explain that, Joe. Well, the quieting ramp is a gradual taper on each face of the cam between the nose and the base. Now, the ramp raises the tappet slowly while the clearance between the tappet screw and the valve stem is being taken up. Then, when the clearance is all taken up, 
The cam lifts the valve quickly to its wide open position. When the valve is on the way down, the cam lets it drop quickly until the tappet reaches the quieting ramp. From there on, the valve is slowed up so it doesn't snap down on its seat. And once the tappet is on the quieting ramp, the rate at which the valve closes remains the same. Now, even if you set the clearance closer than specified, the engine won't run any quieter. And if you set them too close, the valve might be held off its seat and burn. That's why it's important when you check valve clearances cold to have the camshaft nose down. You've got to check them that way, Mike. If you set the clearance with the tappet part way up the ramp, your quieting ramp would be all used up before the tappet contacts the valve stem. Then the tappet would be moving fast when it hit the valve stem and you'd get noise. That's another reason why you got to recheck clearances with the engine hot and running. Here's something else, Mike. There's a slight taper across the face of the cam. You know what that's for? Well, now it slips my mind for the moment. Suppose you tell me. Slipped your mind, huh? Well, I suppose you know that the bottom of the tappet is crowned a little. Now, it's the crowned surface of the tappet and the taper across the face of the cam that keep the tappet turning a little every time the cam lifts it. So the wear on the tappet surface isn't all in one spot. Well, I must admit that's something I didn't know. I knew the tappet had to turn around so it didn't get grooved, but I didn't know what made it turn. Well, now to get back to the valve. Most of the heat of the valve head is carried off to the cooling system water when the valve is down on its seat. Sure, now, when you're about to tell me that if there isn't enough tappet clearance, the tappet may hold the valve off its seat. So, the poor valve gets the full blast of that exhaust heat. Instead of cooling off, it gets hotter than ever. And by the same token, if the tappet clearances are too wide, you won't take full advantage of the quieting ramp. And the result is a noisy engine. Mike's a jump ahead of you, Joe. Well, that's only part of the story. You forgot to mention, Mike, that the water distributor tube in the block keeps a stream of cool water directed at each exhaust valve seat to keep it cool. And if you get a car with high mileage where the same valve keeps burning and you're sure the tappet clearances are right, well, you better check that water distributor tube. Maybe the holes are plugged or the tube is rusted. Nice comeback, kid. And that's a point worth remembering. Sure, and it is. But tell me, can we be getting on with this valve job now? Sure, Mike. I'll clean the carbon off the head and block while you reface the valve. You sure you cover up all the holes, Joe, so you don't get carbon dust down into the engine? Fine. And while you boys are working, I'll get someone to turn this record over. Hey, Joe, you better do a good job of cleaning the valve guides. And clean out the counter bores, too. Yeah, I know. You gotta clean out the carbon so you can check the guides for wear. And you also clean it out so the valves won't stick open and burn. Ready to check those valve guides now, Joe? Well, I will be by the time you get the dial gauge clamped in place. Now, with the valve wide open, we'll be able to see how much clearance we've got in the guide. Shows 6,000, Spike. That's all right for the exhaust valve on this model. And the intake valve shouldn't be over five thousandths. Yep, six thousandths movement at the head of a wide open valve means about four thousandths clearance down in the guide. Why sure, that's because you're taking up a little wear at the top and bottom of the guide. Know why you get noise from sloppy guides, Joe? Why, of course. If there's too much clearance, the valves will cock in the guides and strike on the sides of the seats before the tappets get down on the quieting ramps of the cams. And if the intake valves have too much clearance, they'll let oil be drawn up into the combustion chamber. That's one cause of excessive oil consumption. And that oil gets baked onto the guide and makes the valve stick. Say, Mike, have you ever noticed how valve guides and valve stems are made? I have. It is the counterbore in the guide you mean, I suppose. And the relief ground in the valve stem. That's right. Uh, do you know why they're made that way? 
Sure, I never gave it much thought, Joe. Well, there's a good reason for it, Mike. The exhaust valve guide is installed with the counter bore up to help shield the valve stem from the hot exhaust gas. And that counter bore also helps to keep carbon from building up in the guide and causing the valve to stick. The intake valve guide is installed with the counter bore down. That's so the edge of the relief on the valve stem can act as a wiper and keep too much oil from traveling up the stem. Would you listen to the man? He must have eaten a book on the subject. Suppose you start working on those valve seats and see if they'll remind you of something else to tell old Mike. Didn't make much of an impression that time, did you, Joe? <laughs> He's good, all right, but I'll get him yet. Hey, you don't have to lean on that grinder, Joe. It ain't a shovel. Oh, lay off, will you? I gotta take a clean cut, haven't I? Yeah, but you don't have to take out half the block. Just use enough pressure to clean up the seats. Okay. Give me a chance to finish it, will you? Ah, there, Joe, this is a fine-looking seat you made. Keep them between a sixteenth and three thirty seconds of an inch wide, and we'll be turning out a good job. Glory be, and I'm glad we didn't have to spend time replacing any of these seat inserts. They're all in good shape. That's the matter, Mike. Losing your grip. Replacing inserts isn't much of a job if you do it like it says in the reference book. Sure, now, that must be in the book Joe wrote, eh? Oh, he ain't that smart, Mike. But the book's got some good dope on chilling down the seats with dry ice and getting a good tight fit in the block. Now, let me finish up these seats. That's the last one. Good. Now Mike can check the seats for run out. Well, my boy, I couldn't have done better myself. They're all within one and a half thousandths, and that's close enough to satisfy even the angel. Now you can lap the valves in with fine lapping compound. And when you're through, get all that compound wiped off, Joe. Don't want any of it to walk down into the guides. Mike? You're figuring on replacing valve springs on this job? What for? Sure, and there's no use replacing springs as long as they're all right. I'm going to test them, of course. Or did you have some pet theory about replacing springs? Well, do you know what makes valve springs break? Oh, I don't know, Joe. Guess they just get tired out and quit. Well, Mike, one cause of springs breaking is etching. Etchings? Sure, and I thought them was pictures. Oh, I'll pay your age, Mike. Now, you know that moisture collects on the inside of the engine when it cools off. Yeah, and that moisture evaporates when the engine warms up, and the crankcase ventilating system carries the vapor off while the engine is operating at normal temperature. But if the owner uses his car for short trips so the engine never gets a chance to warm up, a lot of the moisture never gets carried off. It forms sludge and acid. And that acid etches, or eats into the surface of the springs, and weakens them so they break. And what do you do to stop this etching business? You can change the oil more often. Change the oil filter, too. And you might want to put in a 180-degree thermostat so the engine will run warmer. Ask Mike what happens if you get a spring in upside down, Joe. Ah, oh, there ain't no upside down to these springs, Tech. You can put them in with either end up. Well, these springs are okay, so let's button this job up. Better let me pull this head down. Takes a real man to get it down tight so the gasket won't blow. Well, hey, don't you use a torque wrench? A torque wrench, yeah. Listen, my boy, all Mike's muscles tell him when the head is down tight. Yeah, that's just it. If you go leaning on that wrench, you're apt to pull the cylinders and valve seats out of shape. But that won't happen when you tighten the head in the proper sequence with a torque wrench. Sure, and you're right, Tech. I just wanted to see if the professor here would hold still for me using a regular wrench instead of a torque wrench. Now then, Joe, as soon as I get through here, you can set the tappets. Huh? Ain't you gonna check the valve timing? And what for? Were you thinking the valves might be out of time? If there was any need of it, I'd have checked it when the head was off. 
Sure, Joe. If the timing on this job had been off, you'd have heard from the owner before this. Checking timing's no problem, Joe. All you gotta do is watch the valves and the piston. If the intake valve opens just a little before top center on the exhaust stroke, and the exhaust valve closes just after, the timing's all right. You can see that with the heads off. Okay, Mike. Now I'll go ahead and set the tappet clearances. I'll set them cold. Nine for the intakes and twelve for the exhausts. You can set them that way cold. But remember to warm up the engine and check them when they're hot to be sure you've got eight thousands clearance on the intake valves and ten on the exhausts. Now we'll check the ignition timing and make another vacuum test to see how good a job we did. Well, will you look at that? The needle's steady as a rock. Looks like with my long experience and your lectures, all Mike's turned out another masterpiece of workmanship. Yep, just like my boy said. If you know how things work, you can do a better job of fixing them. So your boy's studying this stuff in school, huh? Sure, and that's where you get the lectures you've been dishing out to me. And all the time I was thinking how smart you was. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter where you got the dope, Joe. I guess we all learned something today. We learned it takes know-how and careful workmanship to turn out the kind of a job that'll keep customers happy. As Mike would say, that's the only kind of a job that really pays off. Thank you.